when Christ, the Son of God, becoming uh, become a human being, enters into humanity, which is the peak of the evolutionary process that has now become conscious of the Creator and can respond with gratitude and abstract ideas or, or uh, is, is self-reflective, self-conscious, can be forgiving, compassionate, and all the things that are, are not uh, found in the animal kingdom. And except in so far as we're uh, kind of glorified animals. <laughs> in, uh, in the classical definition of a human being, it's, uh, or we're described as uh, thinking animals. Notice thinking is only an adjective. <laughs> so, so we're mammals, we're part of this creation, part of this earth, part of this universe, and part of the continuing education or uh, development of human consciousness as expressed in under these circumstances. So uh, the idea of non-duality as it's understood today appears often in all the great mystics and, and in the sacraments and liturgy of the church it's implied. And uh, it needs to be uh, more deliberately expressed in our time as, in so far as, as this terminology is, is the one that's being used in, in uh, spiritual circles today. And so non-dual uh, originally uh, is the idea that the separate self sense disappears and so that everything that, that happens uh, is, is a direct experience of reality uh, without being necessarily a great experience. It's just being able to lead ordinary life without thinking of oneself. So that when you look at a tree, it's a tree and not you looking at the tree, which is the normal response of our rational intellect. So uh, how, how, do we, uh, how do we grow in this? Well, uh, first of all, Christ has become man in Jesus, and he's come to show us how to do this. And... Uh, He's taken the whole human race into himself by becoming human. As in Paul's uh, teaching, he's compared to Adam as the second Adam. And so the, the, the emphasis there is that all humanity is in Christ in a special way. Because of his divine nature, he can't help but penetrate everything uh, in humanity. And so his experience extends to the details of being a human being, from eating lunch or having a cup of tea or walking around, taking a bath or whatever ordinary humans are usually doing. That's what he seems to have done for 30 years. But what is uh, clear that he was manifesting the love of God for human beings by becoming one with them uh, in order that human beings might become one with God. And, and this is a, one of the classical statements of the early church fathers, that, that God became man in order that people might become God. Each human being is invited, and, and those who do certainly become a new creature in Christ. And... and uh, as cells in the mystical body. So we bring our little holon or our little fractal <laughs> expression of the divine geometry uh, into ordinary life and everything we do it can't be separated from this oneness that dwells in us as a kind of deepest cell. And little by little we're meant to develop into a capacity of of being conscious of that, that higher self from which we, we come. In the Christian religion, love is the bottom line. Love 
God with your whole mind, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor is yourself because the same God is in them as in us. So that all humans basically are equal in dignity and in their nature. And, and they're also inserted now into the mystical body of Christ with a call to be, uh, 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 to serve and to build up the body of Christ in various ways. So you're a living cell in a living body that has the Holy Spirit as the life blood that fills the whole, uh, every cell and indeed every particle of, of cells. So since we're made up of trillions of them, we're saturated really with God. But it, it's basically not science or intellectual reflection that awakens to this reality, but experience. And this experience is, is the experience of relating to God out of a developing relationship that becomes more and more intimate, more, in, more one, so that the self is no longer dominating and the emotional programs for happiness have been laid to rest or moderated so that they, they're they not the main focus of conversation or of our uh, communion with ourselves, with God, or with others. So, so as that grows, duality diminishes, uh, somewhat like a, 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 a deep friendship in, in marriage where the couple, as they grow through the various difficulties, uh, become more and more appreciative of each other and uh, sharing trials and, and bearing with each other's imperfections and limitations. They are concerned with each other and uh, helping each other, serving each other. Christian non-duality then is this increasing merging of our all our interests and body and soul and emotions into the uh, body of Christ, the new creation, uh, who is, through the Spirit, has given us uh, the source of a new motivation, which comes out of the uh, fruits and gifts of the Spirit. Corollary of this is uh, the importance of cultivating an awareness or a faith or a conviction in, in the divine indwelling. Uh, that's really the source and root of the, of the spiritual life, that it's possible that it's here. And so we don't have to become anybody. We already are all that we can be. So there's, when there's nobody to become, think of how free you would be. <laughs> relax. You only have to be what we are already, which is the creature and the beloved of God. So non-duality for the Christian is to be guided by the spirit, not by the, one of the false selves or the ego. Effortless total receptivity is the best way to be open to God's guidance. It's, it's like as uh, being a container for God. So uh, for a container to be filled, what's the best response? Emptiness, openness. It's very simple, but very hard to do. All you have to do is nothing. <laughs> Try it. But it doesn't mean you actually do nothing. It means that you're empty of all will, proposals, but open to God's action so that you do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Emptiness is not total nothingness, mm -hmm. but emptiness with an openness to becoming more. Mm -hmm.